Alright, yeah, welcome back to some more Magic Arena. We're back once again with our Red White Squee Blade Legends list. So, let's not waste any time. Let's get into this absolute doozy of a deck, and I'll see you all there. Okay, we're in, and we're on the play with a two lander, a way to defend ourselves, a board wipe, and a Danatha. I think we can take this. I'm not too pleased about seeing the Immolating Infernos. I think they'd be better off as maybe even a Black Blade or an Asquee. Or even a third land as well, because we do technically need that. But two tap lands for turns one and two is not terrible, as long as we don't have to use this Justice Strike. Ooh. I'm going to get this Black Blade down right now and shock it in. Because if we are up against even like any kind of non-white deck here, as long as they don't drop white, Black Blade is sticking for the rest of this game. And that's very important because Squee is one of the harder to deal with uh, parts of this combo. So getting Black Blade down right early. Oof. Not a land there is really, really bad. Getting it down right nice and early means it's going to be really difficult for my opponent to win this game, really. Unless they get some really decent pressure on soon. It's like they could Thought Erasure me here, but honestly, if this is just Blue Black Discard... There's not much in this hand, really, to scare them, other than Danatha. That's it, really. Sideboarding, we take out Clarions, most likely. Well, there's Squee. Looks like we're going to be discarding to hand size. Fun times. <laughs> One of the uses for Squee. It's not the, uh, the use I wanted for him, but here we are. Okay, well, good game. Discard Squee. So, Night Veil Predator for our opponent. I'm not too scared about this. It is hard to uh, interact with, but... Oh, this is... Blue-Black Tempo. Well, this matchup... gets a little bit more interesting. Especially when we still don't hit lands, but Tormenting Voice, as long as he doesn't Sinister Sabotage us here, should hopefully find us a land. We can't be that unlucky. There we go. I say that. I wanted to kid myself and say that we actually, uh... <laughs> we can't be that unlucky. That's a damn lie. So this one puts counters on creatures, which makes sense for this kind of deck. Allows him to, yep, put things out of burn range for my Deafening Clarions. Um, we're probably going to lose to all of this, to be honest. Uh, I don't really have a way of interacting with these guys in the early game. I mean, we could use Danatha here and equip her, but all he needs is a removal spell and she is done. So we'll play her out, see if she survives. If she does, she attacks very nicely into these predators anyway. But I don't expect to see her surviving unless my opponent's uh, removal of choice is just cast downs. And in which case, Danatha can't be targeted. So we're taking eight. He's drawing a card. We're going to equip and see if we can attack. A land drop is the best card for us. But it looks like Danath is dead here. Vraska's Contempt is a good one. Should they have it? Well, land, equip, prep for the scoop. We're actually just dead anyway. Uh, that's exactly eight. So, didn't do the math. <laughs> Really unfortunate game one there. I'm not really going to put that down to this deck being bad against this uh, matchup. I actually think it's pretty good, in all honesty. So, against Night Veil vale Predators and Curious Obsessions. I think a lot of the removal that we have is pretty good. Um, to deal with the Night Veil vale Predators, though, I think all we really need to do is actually get our combo going. We need our Black Blade on a creature and... I don't think a 3-3 or a 4-4 hexproofing death touch is really going to matter all that much to us. That being said, I could bring in the Star of Extinctions. Um, they're going to be bringing in like Night Veil Sprites and Thief of Sanities and things of that nature. So I think Shiv and Fire actually will see a little bit of play here. I'm kind of guessing as to what my opponent is doing. Uh, the Immolating Infernos don't seem amazing. I could cut one of those. Ruinous Blast is bound to be pretty overpowered. And I think I might cut a Clarion. Hmm. 
tempted to just cut more clarions just because we're going for more single targeted removal. Then again, this is another way to deal with the Night Vale Predator. Uh, this one's a hard one to cut into. I think it's just a trim, really. Tormenting Voice right there. Um, hmm. Yeah, I really like the instant speed Shiv and Fire because we can respond to a Curious Obsession on a little creature uh, with a removal spell. I think this is how we're going to have to do it. I'm not sure if this is perfect or not. It probably isn't. But we're going to try it. Until I see more of my opponent's deck, there's not really much I can do about it. Alright, well, we're back on the play. Do we have a good hand? It's another one lander. Screw you, deck. This one's good. Uh, two lander with Lannery Storms and Anathas. We've got a lot of early game. Lyra, uh, Lannery Storm can help us get into Lyra as well if we make our land drops and get ourselves there. So let's find out, shall we? That's not a land drop. I'm going to bottom it. Just need to find that third land and we're all good. I mean, treasure map's not terrible. But I'd just prefer a land. I want the security of actually being able to play Magic the Gathering today. And we've got it. Okay, so let's just play Mountain and pass. Memorial to Folly for our opponent. It's going to be annoying. But luckily for us, we have a lot of first striking stuff. So those death touching 3-3s. Three not going to be too impressive. Guild Mages Forum. Into Kite Sail Freebooter, which will hit absolutely nothing. Opponent with the perfect sideboard tech there for the situation. Alright, I'm going to go Lannery Storm. It allows me to ramp up and potentially play a Lyra on turn 4. My opponent can't kill Lannery either, so... It's just a bad block all around. And I'm liking where we're at now. This is a pretty sweet hand to keep the pressure up against our opponent. Lanneries can become 3-2, so they can push through the Hexproof. So I'm not too fussed about that. We'll have to see if our opponent uses something like a Curious Obsession in Freebooter, because they can filter some mana here for the Forum. And the thing is, Lannery can actually swing through for 4 as well, so even if they somehow manage to... Get a big booty creature down there. Lannery can still swing through, should we want her to do that. But likelihood is that we're probably just going to slap down Lyra if we make a land drop, or even actually post-combat. We'll have to see. Another memorial. So our opponent's greedy mana is really coming back to bite them on this one. Let's see if Lannery lives. Get in the swing in first, which is fine by me. And I expect Lannery to bite the dust here. He's hovered it a few times. He's got to be thinking about getting rid of it. No, apparently not. Ooh, we've got a Black Blade, though. Black Blade is solid. Okay, so Lannery swings in. Let's the damage through. Okay, so now that he doesn't have the mana to stop us with the Black Blade, I'm going to get that down right now. He's got black and colourless, or one blue here, so Black Blade should be fine. We can play around a spell pierce if he was to filter the mana, because we have the treasures. Do we play down Danatha? Um, that's a tough one. Because if he kills Lannery Storm, I can't equip the next creature immediately. But if I have two creatures, then that changes things. I think I am going to crack these treasures and play Danatha. We don't get the value on the treasure crack there, but we were never going to get that. Not with a correct play, anyway. And now we can choose which one we want to attach to the Black Blade. He can kill in response, which is a fair play to make. Could see... You can't do a Night Vale Predator here. Hostage Taker. Okay, taking the Danatha. That's fine. Don't really mind that. As I mentioned, we now can equip this Black Blade and swing for a lot of damage. And we've got to back up Danatha anyway. 
So let's equip our legendary creature. Turning Lanaray into a 5-5. Five five. Could be a 6-5 if I crack the treasure, but I'm not going to. I actually really need the mana since we're missing our land drops. And our opponent can play our Danatha all they want, but they're not actually really going to pressure us with it. And Lannery can now push through anything that our opponent puts in front of us. Thief of Sanity. Alright. Kind of called it on the deck structure here. Ooh, Squee. Squee's an interesting one. Alright, well, Lannery... Get on in. Let's see how he blocks. Just going to chump with the freebooter. That's fair enough. And, well, we will play Lyra to block the thief. Our opponent unable to counter any of these spells. Now Thief of Sanity can't get through without a removal spell. Which means they're pointing it at the creature without the black blade. Which is awesome. And they've had enough. Yeah, our opponent's greedy mana base really screwed them over there. I imagine that they had a pretty good hand, but none of that was ever going to work. So we did see um, Hostage Taker there. She doesn't die to Justice Strike and has to die to a Shivan Fire Kicked or a Lava Coil. So I'm actually going to add in another Lava Coil to deal, deal with that instead. I think that's just a little bit more important. Could maybe just bring in both Lava Coils and Shivan Fires since we know that they are kind of low to the ground tempo. We could instead cut some of our high cost stuff, maybe even a Shalai. They don't seem to want to interact with us too much, so let's just interact with them. And just go with all of our early game removal package. Treat them like they're an aggro deck essentially. And I think we'd be okay with this. Yeah, we have less creatures, but in theory we shouldn't need them because Squee is kind of our... 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th, and 19th creature in our deck. And 21st. But yes, uh, no problems there. We just have to see Squee at some point, and then creature worries are a thing of the past. Alright. Presumably this is going to be our first time being on the draw. Yep, okay. We have all the removal in the world, so I'm going to keep this one. I don't think there's a chance in hell that anything has an obsession attached to it and uh, survives it. So we'll have to see. Turn one. Siren Storm Tamer. Okay. That's one way to survive a removal spell. We can't hit that just yet, but if our opponent plays a two drop and plays a two drop creature, it's gone. Okay, Storm Tamer getting the hit in. Alright, so we could Tormenting Voice and discard, or alternatively I could take down the Storm Tamer using the removal that we have available. Um, I think we actually hold up in our removal. See what we can hit on turn 3, because he might just drop down a Thief of Sanity. Just passes. Okay, I'm going to take down the Siren Storm Tamer. I want my opponent very uh, threat light, so let's get that out of the way. No land for us, but we do get to discard a squee, so as long as our opponent doesn't spell pierce counter or anything like that, we should be all good. Sweet. And that allows us to make our land drop, which is awesome. It's a shame we don't have our shiv and fire here, because then we'd be able to hold it open. But, yeah, again, it looks like our opponent's greedy mana base is biting them in the arse. Alright, so we could play a squee. But I think actually going for something like Lannery and ramping up is a little bit better. It's going to tap this colorless so we can pretend to have cards that we don't have. And let's see if she survives combat. As I mentioned, he could filter land. Yeah, for something like a moment of craving. That's fine. We don't mind that. We actually have reasonable mana anyway, so. Opponent passes the turn. I think I'm going to opt for the treasure map here. We're under no pressure right now, so I can basically add to my board as opposed to playing a Danather into another Moment of Craving or anything like that. And this should just hopefully set up our draws, allow us to find all the pieces that we need to make sure that everything dies. 
my upkeep stop. Another memorial. Yeah, our opponents got the bad case of too many tap lands in their deck. Unmoored Ego. Okay, let's let them name something. It's probably going to be Black Blade, I assume. <laughs> I really, really want them to name Squee. Good god, that'd be hilarious. They won't do it though, it's probably Black Blade. That, Danathor, or Lannery. Unmoored Ego is kind of terrible against us though, unless they are planning on controlling us out of the game. Um, and then Black Blade is the only good name here. You should never really bring in Unmoored Ego unless it's guaranteed to win you a game, so you want to name combo pieces with Unmoored Ego. If it's just to take four cards from your opponent, and they're just cards, yeah, just taking two Lyras, I couldn't care less about that. That's like one of the least likely to resolve creatures anyway, so... It was a really bad name for my opponent there. A bad call, in fact, just to uh, bring in Unmoored Ego. Because I really don't need Ly uh, Lyra when I've got Squee and a Black Blade. Because it's just as effective. And in fact, Danitha can get much bigger than the average Lyra anyway, so... Now she's going to resolve. And we'll see if she sticks around, but... I'm not too fussed if she doesn't either. Treasure map needs to go find me my Black Blade, though. But yeah, you name Nexus of Fates if they're playing turns. You name Atrata. Okay. How do we deal with Atrata? That's a 4-6 as well. Okay, well I guess what we do to deal with Atrata is when we take this land. Draw that land. Play it and then... So this one says, when it deals combat damage to a player, exile a creature that player controls and put a hit counter on that card. That player loses the game if they own three or more exiled cards with hit counters on them. So I could just play a Squee for the rest of the game, and he just racks up the hit counters, and that shouldn't let me lose the game if we're going to go that route. I could also actually Immolating Inferno here, and I think that's probably what I'm going to do first of all. Yeah, I'll take Lannery Storm. So we get some treasures, we get the City's Blessing, and then I'm just going to X6 my opponent here. Kill Atrata, hit face. But yeah, this needs uh, individual creatures, so the same squee racking up the same amount of hit counters on it. Unless the game is bugged, in theory I don't think this should work. Three or more exiled cards. Yeah, this would be the only exiled card in theory. Duress can take Blast. Assuming that's going to be the one. What I'd really like to see is Lannery Storm resolve here so that we can generate those treasures that we just lost. That'll allow Treasure Cove to be a little bit more useful. It's not the end of the world though, because we do have Arch of Araska online now, so there is that. I'm going to try this first. Yeah, Sinister Sabotage is fine. Although a little annoying. And dumps a land. Fair enough. Hit you past the turn. Looks like Squee Beats are the way to go. Okay, there's a Ritualist up. Cliff Prop Retreat, Squee, Pass. Fortunately, one mana short of an Archer of Raska trigger here. There's Night Veil Predator, okay. As a 4-4, four, four. he knows about this Deafening Clarion, so I'm curious to see if he blocks here. If he does, I'm going to use the Clarion. It's basically a 1-for-1, one one, because I still get my Squee back. Yeah. He's noticed. Alright, so let's get Treasure Map down. I'm not sure if I'll Scry with it, because I can draw with Arch instead. That's an interesting one, because if I actually flip treasure map, then I could... Lazav, okay, you're dead. 
I could draw additional cars later, so it's kind of an investment in that sense. So he can go and change into a Trotter if he likes, but he's not going to live that long. Unless my opponent runs negates. So do I invest in the top deck and future draws, or do I just draw and take four? I'm actually in an interesting position now. Opponent being on ten. They're going to be on eight if they don't deal with Squee. But we're taking four a turn, so that's something that we do actually really need to answer. Losing that Ruinous Blast was a bit of a problem. I think because that is the case, I'm going to actually treasure map. It goes a little bit deeper to find me some answers, like a Black Blade. Okay, so let's draw the Black Blade. Let's bait the counter by hitting Lazav. Let's it go. Okay. And then it's going to be Black Blade. You need a negate here. Doesn't have it. And I don't think you should have the removal either. And that's a 10-9. Swinging over for lethal. G. G. Interesting deck for my opponent. I do kind of like the uh, the blue-black tempo lists. Uh, I would, if I was playing my opponent's deck, not run even nearly half as many uh, tap lands as they did there. The guild gates really hurt them, but that's probably a budget thing. Uh, the memorials, if you're playing tempo... Uh, pretty bad. Uh, Memorial to Folly I could see an exception for, but the Memorial to Genius, uh, the drawing two extra cards, kind of pointless since you're supposed to be sticking Curious Obsessions on creatures. That's your main card draw. I'd run four Curious Obsessions over that. But yeah, interesting choice. Our opponent could not possibly attract us to death though because we are quite happily playing Squee for the rest of the game. And I think in that instance, they could hit Danatha and Squee, and that would be two of the three creatures that they needed to win the game that way. So that was just never going to happen, but I wasn't even going to give my opponent the option of doing that, so uh, destroying the uh, Etrata there was probably just fine, especially since it allowed me to six my opponent in the face and ultimately get the exacties for lethal. So I hope you guys have enjoyed today's episode. That was a bit of a doozy. If you enjoyed though, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that little bell icon, even share the video around if you do enjoy the deck and you know somebody who might enjoy it. Helps out the channel a great deal. And yeah, other than that, thanks very much for watching guys, and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.